Hello, this is Mike Lively, and we're on our second video on Flash in the Family, and today we're going to be talking about basic interface. Now, I'm here at Daymar College today with two students. i got uh, Matt. Say hello, Matt. Hi. And Zach. Hello. And we're going to be going through the basic interface of Flash, but first I want to show them what their assignment is. Uh, so we're actually going to be looking at four exercises today. We're actually going to go to f textures uh, link that we talked about earlier. We're going to get a sliding door, and we're going to chop that sliding door up in uh, Photoshop. So we're going to learn how to animate. Uh, today we'll be just doing some basic timeline stuff and next week we'll be animating the sliding door and we're going to be uh, putting the door into layers and then we're going to create a background puppet scene so isn't that pretty cool so we're going to be learning a lot of flash tonight okay I have flash up right now but I actually want to go back and start off with the basics now if you're a student and you're listening to this be aware that you can go to Adobe's website and actually get flash for about hundred and seventy nine dollars and I'm actually on the student version right now myself I I work in industry but uh, I can't bring the industry product home so I went and bought my own student version since I'm an instructor and I was able to get it so just go to flash once you've installed it and click on that and bring it up now flash takes a little bit of time loading Of course, that's a typical for Adobe products they typically take a bit of time loading but once you get them up they run pretty fast and they are very dynamic Okay, so once you do that, Flash does come up, and you can see there's ActionScript 2 and ActionScript 3. Now, of course, you want to click on ActionScript 3, because this is something that really happened to Flash a few years ago, which is really fantastic, is that we went to object-oriented programming. So in the past, we were all doing spaghetti coding, and we felt comfortable with it. Then, oop, object-oriented programming came along, and oh boy, it was a lot to swallow, but it's extremely powerful. So we will be talking about some uh, spaghetti coding, but we'll also talk about object-oriented programming. You, of course, want to do everything in ActionScript 3. So click on ActionScript 3 and up comes this beautiful interface and uh, it's, it's not too hard. It may look a little scary at first, but we're going to go through it step by step. Now, just real quick, uh, if you've got the book, uh, Classroom in a Book is uh, from Adobe Press, then you can follow along with us because we're going through many of the topics. Not quite the same as Flash in the Family, but similar since I'm teaching the same course at uh, Daymar. So real quick here, the first thing I want to hit real quick here is actually the stage, layers, timeline, and the property inspector. So this big white thing right here, this is your stage right here. And that's where all your drawing and your animation is going to occur. And we call that the flash stage. And just above that is the timeline. And timeline is the cool thing that flash can do for animation. So in this class, when you're doing animation, cartoon animation, you're animating uh, tweening, you'll be using this timeline a lot. Now this timeline basically, can, if you, you see here, I can just drag along here and I can create frames. So if I click up here and I hit the F6 button, for example, I can create a frame. And now I can drag along, here's that little playhead right there, and I can actually put figures inside this stage, and as I do that, I can actually animate things. All right. uh, so we, I could, for example, show you an example. If I come along here and I put a little, uh, I'll hit F6, put a little keyframe here, I can actually come along here and I can actually put a little box and I draw a little box on the stage. There it is. And if you come along here, you don't see it, but as you animate, you see it. All right. So I created a keyframe using the F6 button and you can see it, the timeline runs, runs along here. Let's go ahead and run this real quick and let's show that to you. So you, to run a movie, you're just going to go to test uh, and then just go con test control enter. Now what I want you to do is learn shortcut keys. That'll make your work a lot faster. So let me show you what I would do as opposed to coming up here and going Control, um, Test, Test Movie. I'm just going to come along here and hit Control, Enter on my keyboard. Control, Enter. And that's going to create what's called an SWF and run the movie. And you see it's flashing. Because the reason it's flashing is because part of the screen is what? Blank. And so when it's blank, there's nothing there. And part of the screen is what? Filled in. Yeah. So the playhead is going all the way to the end and then coming back all the way to the end and then coming back and all the way to the end and then coming back. And so you should be, as studious students, asking me the question, how fast does it go? Right? As fast as you want. Uh, you can change the uh, frame rate. We're going to show you how to do that in the properties panel over here. So if you want to change how fast something goes, right over here in the property panel, you can do that. Right now we're running at what? FPS. What does that stand for? Frames per frames per second. So we're running at 24 frames per second. If I wanted to speed that up or slow that down, I could actually click on that and actually change that. Now one of the cool things that Flash uh, 5 has got now is it's got this little arrow key. See that arrow key right there? That's actually a slider and so I can actually slide and change the rate which I'm running at. Now it's not actually doing it for me dynamically. When I run the next movie it would actually change that. 
Okay, so uh, that's uh, something that might, if you're used to 3D animation, you see that type thing in uh, 3ds Max, where you have these sliders and it makes your life a little bit easier. Or sometimes it can make it difficult. So I have a tendency just to click on there and say, hey, let's do 12 frames per second. Now let's just talk about reality. When you're running from the web, what kind of frames per second? Do you want really high frames per second or low frames per second? Low. It really depends. I've seen guys try to run games at 100 frames a second. But you really need to optimize your graphics to get that fast, okay? Uh, typically, uh, I've seen people run 12, 15, and Flash Builder actually runs at 24 frames a second. And I typically don't go much higher than that. But I've seen people make some really crisp, cool-looking stuff running at 60 frames a second or 100 frames a second, okay? So uh, that's uh, just kind of introductory. So we saw that timeline. What I'm going to do here is kind of hit the Control-Z key. You know what Control-Z does? doesn't look at it, does, it takes you back. So everything I did, I'm undoing. Control Z is undo, okay? So, uh, so hit that Control Z. What's Control Y? Uh, redo. Go the other way. Okay, so this is the stage, and, and I'm going to put things on the stage. And let me bring this down so you can see everything in the screen. So you can see there's a lot of menu items up here, uh, right here. And we'll talk about those. The big one is going to be the Windows menu item, we'll, we'll get to. But uh, the big thing right now, of course, is this stage. And, and Flash has some dynamic drawing tools, but it also has some dynamic effects we'll talk about later. So that's the first thing. You guys got the, got the stage down? Yeah. And I'm going to put things into the stage by putting things where? In the timeline. In the timeline. And in the timeline, these little squares are called keyframes. All right. Now, where do we get the idea of keyframes coming from? Do you have any idea? No. From Walt Disney. We're going to be doing animation, and the whole idea of keyframes is so important. So what is a keyframe? Well, in, when Walt Disney started doing uh, animation, he realized he had some really good animators, and he had student animators that were learning, apprentices. And so he would have the good animators do frames, like every 15 frames or every 20, second, 20 frames. And in between there, you had to have your, your guys who were learning do the rest of them. So they would draw to the keyframe. They knew how to make it. They just like morph in animation, make an arm move. So they draw everything exactly the same until they got, until they got the next keyframe. And so the whole concept of keyframe comes from Walt Disney and making cartoons. And so since we'll be doing cartooning, it's just natural in Flash to do a lot of that. Now, believe it or not, Adobe has gotten really powerful with object-oriented, so you can actually do complete animations without even doing keyframing. But in this class, we were concentrating on animation. So you'll actually be doing a lot of keyframing as well. So that's the stage right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at something else. And this is this timeline. We already discussed it just a little bit. And one cool thing about the timeline right here. It will help me against my competitors, my freelance. Oh, yeah. If you can learn Flash, it'll definitely help you in your freelance. It's something called a RIA. It's an interactive website. And that's, you know, why is interaction so important in the industry? Have any idea? Cast it? No, no. That's more than that. When you get excited, when you get emotionally involved with the site, when you want to go there, what do you do more often? Right? You click, and that's the whole thing. You know, I mean, it really draws people in, and it turns on the the visual cortex in their brain, and and you have better customers, and and it's just wonderful. So anyway, we're looking at this timeline right here, and so that's where we're going to put our object that we draw on the stage. But there's something cool about the timeline I want to show you quick here, and that's this little button right here. This is so important to realize about Flash, and when I click that, what happened? Aha, uh -huh. layering. Ah, I could put one thing on top of another. So if I come along here, for example, and I want to come here and put a little square in that layer, I can come along here and put a circle. And I'm going to hold this down. I see I have circles here. You see that? I can put a circle in another layer. So you can have relaxed. And whatever is on the bottom, what is on the bottom, right? Now, what if I don't like that? What if I want to switch them? What do you think I would do? You would edit that layer. I just drag it. Isn't that cool? Now, I don't need these layers right here, so I just click on one and hit the trash can. Click on the other and hit the trash can, get rid of it. But man, I don't like the layer two. I want to call, what is that? Is that, what is it? Is that the circle or is that the square? If I click on it, it highlights, but I need to know what that is, so what would I do next? Use arrows. I'm going to double click on that and give it a name. So I double click and I'm going to call that, what is that? Square. I'll mess that up. Square, if I spell it right. And this one right here, I'm going to call circle. Now I know which one is what. Isn't that cool? So just double click on the space and then you can actually type what name it is. And you want to do that. You want to keep everything organized very well. And so I come along here, I just drag this up, I, that's on top, and I drag this down, that's on bottom. Isn't that cool? So this layering is going to become extremely important. We're going to use it a lot. And I uh, just want to know that it's there and that you can actually, uh, uh, actually just 
layer tons of stuff. And when you see professional websites out there, you see lots of layering involved, okay? So we'll be doing that. Uh, what else needs to be, there's a little folder here, so you can actually organize things into folders. So if I created a folder, I could start stuffing things into folders, you know? And, uh, and, and I don't know if I really want to do that right now, but I could stuff everything into this folder. So when I f fold this folder up, it clicks very nicely. It compresses it. Absolutely, and it's just easier to look at. But wait a second, uh, can I change the name of that folder? Yeah. What would I do? Double click it, that's right. My folder. There you go, very good. All right, so you can organize everything very nicely in Flash, and this is a great feature. Uh, just a few more things here. Uh, you can see that your frames per second is right here. We can change that in the properties, and actually what frame you're on is right here. Okay, so if you ever, never know what frame you're on. There's a few other things right here. We're going to talk about that in a previous lesson, but it gives you the ability to, in a sense, onion skin. And so when you're doing animation, it's important to understand this whole onion skinning process and how to change all your frames at once. And so we're going to talk about that in a later lesson, but just kind of giving the basics of the interface here. All right.